pleasant day to all. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Guten tag. I am Hasmin Tayao, the Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs of Baliwag University, your MC for this morning's program. In this historic, oldest structure of the Baliwag University, where we are right now, which we call as Bahay na Bato or House of Stone, we shall witness the collaboration of all our distinguished partners for the implementation of the Baliwag University Global Skills Partnership Program. We hope that from the time our distinguished guests and partners have entered the doors of Baliwag University, you have felt and experienced our cordial welcome and warm hospitality. The Baliwag University way, the Filipino way. We hope that you have enjoyed the welcoming music played by the Baliwag University Band, the smiles and company of the Baliwag University family. Welcome everyone to the four-day visit of our German partners and the ceremonial soft opening and turnover of the Nursing Skills Laboratory 3 for the Baliwag University Global Skills Partnership Program, which we started last Friday, April 8. To formally start our program, may I request everyone to rise for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem, the National Anthem of the Federal Republic of Germany, and the Baliwag University Hymn. Come to 
Thank you very much. You may now be seated. Once again, a pleasant morning to everyone. At this juncture, may I request Dr. Flordaliza A. Castro, Baliwag University's Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the School of Graduate Studies, to formally introduce the Baliwag University officials joining us today and the team from the College of Nursing and Allied Health Sciences. Dr. Castro. Thank you, Dr. Tayao. I am asking your permission if you will give me the time to also speak without my mask. So again, in behalf of the university, we'd like to say good morning to everyone. As mentioned by Dr. Tayao, you are now sitting in the oldest building of the university, the first building of the university. So allow me to introduce the guests this morning and then also the BU officials. Special uh, good morning to Secretary Sylvester Bello of Dole. So I'd like you to meet our president. Dr. Patricia B. Lagunda, the president of the university. Our vice president for finance and administrative affairs, Vice President Molina B. Santos. Our legal counsel, Attorney Susan Asinto. She's there at the back the consultant for the Center for Academic Development and Assessment and Center for Research and Publication, Dr. Maria Alicia Orosa. Our Human Resource Development Consultant, Attorney Noli Del Rosario. Our MC for today, the Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs and Director of Quality Assurance of the University, Dr. Asmin Tayao. <laughs> Our Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and General Education, Dean Estelita Hozon. <laughs> the very busy Dean of the College of Nursing. I am saying that she is the woman of the week and woman of the hour today, Dean Elizabeth Rojas. <laughs> Dean College of Nursing and Allied Health Sciences Program. Our Chief Librarian and Associate Director of the Publications Office, Ms. Reina Flor Castro. <laughs> Our Academic and Clinical Coordinator for the College of Nursing and Allied Sciences Programs, Mrs. Maria Lourdes Policarpio. Faculty Chairman of BSN Level 3, Mrs. Cecilia Yasa. <laughs> Faculty Chairman, BSN Level 4, Mrs. Maria Lorna A. Ignacio. <laughs> Faculty Chairman, BSN Level 1, Mrs. Licha D. Gonzalez. <laughs> Mrs. Teresita de la Peña, Faculty of SINAS, Mrs. Raquel Cruz, faculty of SINAS also. Mrs. Elizabeth Mantique, also a faculty member of the college, and Mrs. Araceli Victoria, also a faculty member of the college. The others are faculty members and they are around no, to welcome our guests this morning. So again, in behalf of the university, I'm Dr. Castro, the VP for Academic Affairs and Research, welcoming you to the 97th year old institution in Bulacan, Baliwag University. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Flordeliza A. Castro. Friends, it was in 2019 when Baliwag University has started our exploratory discussion about this Global Skills Partnership Program. Our very own university president, Dr. Patricia Bustos Lagunda, 
has been instrumental for this internationalization initiative in Baliwag University. Friends, to formally deliver her welcome message, let us have the President of the Baliwag University, Dr. Patricia Bustos Lagunda. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the Administration of the Baliwag University, a very pleasant morning to all our esteemed guests. I wish to extend a very warm welcome to our Honorable Silvestre H. Bello, the third Secretary, Department of Labor and Employment. Of course, we have with us Mr. Kai Tomsik, Head of Department, German Embassy. Honorable uh, Secretary Bello is joined by Assistant Secretary Alice, Alice Q. Vispera. Mr. Delmer Cruz, Labor Attaché of the Philippine Overseas Labor Office, or Polo, in Germany. Attorney Rosemary Duquez, Director, Government Placement Branch, POEA. ASEC uh, Alice Vispera is joined also by Ms. Maylene Gozun, Mr. Mamerto T. Barrera, Mr. Kenji Riordan Lavilla, Mr. Jupiter T. Remarca, and Mr. Dino Shelito Ulve, Dr. Carmelita C. Divina Gracia, member of the Board of Nursing Professional Regulation Commission, or PRC, Dr. Buenaventura, Dr. Ben Makatangay, Chief Commission on Higher Education uh, Program. Uh, development Office and Program Standards of OPSD, Mr. John Paul de la Cruz, and to our partners of GIZ. I dare not say the complete name or I might mispronounce it. <laughs> GIZ delegation headed by Mr. Bjorn Gruber, Margarete Poz, and Malte Boss, UKBs. Maria Esterberg and Dirk Rogendorf, and Bertelsmann Stiftung Foundation Senior Project Manager, Mr. Najim Azaha. We've had them since Friday, so we consider them as friends. Ms. Fortune De Lara, General Manager of Berlin Language Center. Where are you, Fort? Uh, she's joined by Vivian Jane Mempin, Alradia Dawelbay, Michael Martin, Thomas Jakubek. BU officials, administrators, faculty, and staff, ladies and gentlemen, friends and guests, welcome to Baliwag University. Welcome to our Bahay na Bato, school's oldest structure and symbol of our heritage. For the past three days, our German par partners have had a chance to interact with BU officials, visit our affiliate hospital and home for the elderly, and get a taste of our modest and simple hospitality. Last night, I learned that they have serendipitously witnessed Baliwag's famous Holy Week procession of life-size carrozas or dioramas. And they also got to ride the tricycles of Baliwag. Today, on the fourth day, we shall witness the turnover of training equipment donated by our partners and soft opening of the Nursing Skills Laboratory 3, after which they will meet with student participants of the Baliwag University Global Skills Partnership Program for an informal exchange to find out how they are faring so far. The first batch of student participants in the GSP program are expected to graduate and take the board licensure exams this 2022, I believe in November, ma'am. God willing, they are ready for an exciting experience and career by early to the first half of 2023. On the other hand, the second batch has recently started with their A1 German language training. Thanks to the partnership, this select group of students are given an opportunity to serve and make an impact in the nursing profession. Through the Global Skills Partnership Program, despite the uncertainty uncertainties that confronted us in 2020. 
we have mani manifested this through our 97th anniversary theme, Katatagan Ngayon, Big Kiss ng Kinabukasan. Roughly translated in English, Resilient Today, Stronger Tomorrow. As I mentioned last Friday, this collaboration contributes to the internationalization and globalization strategies of Baliwag University. As one of only 68 autonomous private universities in the country, the first to be granted such status in Region 3 since uh, 2001, this innovative offering bodes well for the university's goal to provide quality education and produce globally competent graduates. Let me commend our College of Nursing and Allied Health Sciences, who for the last 48 years has built a solid and strong nursing program, producing well-rounded and competent nursing professionals who have established successful careers here and abroad. I am proud to say that BU's nursing program has achieved level four accredited status as granted by the FAAP and PACOCOA, and this is the highest accreditation level, and 100% board passing rate for the past years, and it's one of the best region nursing program in this region. We are indeed grateful to GIZ, UKB, and Bertelsmann Stiftung for choosing Baliwag University as one of only two Philippine universities thus far to take part in this Global Skills Partnership Program. Implementing the program was not easy as it coincided with the onset of the global pandemic. But through the sheer de determination, hard work, and trademark way of caring and nurturing students, the Alagang Nursing and Alagang BU way of Dean Elizabeth Rojas and her excellent faculty, the first batch started training for German language in their third year with Berlitz our long-standing academic partner since 2007, and are about to begin their enhanced skills training. This program will be instrumental in making our nursing students cross borders, learn international culture, share the best of being a Filipino, and showcase what it is to be a Baliwag University graduate, a graduate instilled with the BU core values of RISER, responsibility, integrity, service, excellence, and respect. Once again, welcome to Baliwag University. May our partnership continue and reach greater heights. Good morning, good and thank, and mabuhay. Colleagues, at this juncture, we shall listen to the message of the Secretary of the Department of Labor and employment or dole, let us welcome Honorable Silvestre H. Bello III. Thank you, Dr. Ataya. Tama po. Mukhang ang artista, hindi doktor. President Patricia. Alam nyo, naka-green ako ngayon kasi nag-research ako anong favorite color nyo, baliwag green. Ha? My seatmate, Mr. John Gruber. Correct? Okay. Mr. Kai Tamsik. Yeah, you have your ambassador, ambassador Anke, right? He's still your ambassador. That guy, right? <laughs> you know, I I like your ambassador. Yeah. She's always mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know why, sir? Because I gave UK exemption from the deployment ban, while I did not give the same to. Germany. It's the fault of our labor attache, Delmar Cruz. He was the one who said, no exemption for Germany. <laughs> I 
I can say that now because I'm transferring him. <laughs> Who else should I greet? Miss Margaret Post? Mom. Good morning, Mom. Uh, in the Philippines, it's magandang umaga. In Germany, it's verboten. Tama? Verboten is good morning, right? No, of course I know. That's my favorite song in Germany. The song of Elvis Presley. Remember? My love is verboten. That's the song of Elvis Presley. Natandaan yan, no? <laughs> Sino pa i-greet ko? Well, I would like to greet my co-workers in the Department of Labor, Assistant Secretary Alice Visperas. Then I already mentioned Delmer. I don't know if there are people from the Department of Health. Are there? Representative from DOH? As usual, they're absent. From CHED. Do you have representative from CHED? Ayan. Kumusta na CHED? Si Chairman Popoy, okay pa siya? Hindi pa nako-COVID, no? Eh, di naman na yan. Ayaw lang aminin. Do we have representative from PRC? Ah, yes, ma'am. Ano? College of the Medicine. Yan. Yan. And who else should I greet? Other representatives from other government agencies and to our friends, the German, our German counterparts. Good morning to all of you. The Philippines and Germany have been partners for a long time, particularly in the areas of labor, employment, and migration. Germany is also one of the Philippines' largest trade and investment partners with a plethora of collaborative programs in different areas. In terms of labor cooperation, we have demonstrated full success in the deployment of Filipino nurses to Germany through the Triple Win program, which was signed in 2013. Don't worry, Mr. Kruger, by next month, I will leave the deployment club to Germany. So you can have as many nurses from Baliwag. Provided you promise you get them from Baliwa. Okay? <laughs> Since 2013, around 1,797 nurses have been deployed under the program, which is, as I said earlier, exempted from the deployment cap on overseas deployment of Filipino health care workers. The department is in the process of discussing and negotiating two new labor agreements with Germany. Alice, when am I going to Germany? May, I'm going to visit Germany to sign two bilateral labor agreements. One for skilled workers and one for health care workers, especially for nurses from Baliwag University. As I said, one aims to hold another pathway for the recruitment of Filipino healthcare professionals, and another agreement is focused on the deployment of 31 other skills and profession with the following pilot sector. Number one, hotel service, electrical engineering and mechanics, sanitation, hearing and air conditioning, and also child care. We are very hopeful that the two agreements could come to fruition within the term of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte and mark a significant milestone in the history of the Philippine-German bilateral relations. 
Let me also take this opportunity to thank the German government through Mr. Gruber for the warm hospitality to our Filipino nationals living and working in your country. You know, when I was in Germany, when was that, Delmer? 2020, 2019? 2019. I realized that I made the wrong career path. Yeah. Because I realized that as Secretary of Labor, I earned less than a nurse in Germany. Yeah. Alam nyo ba kung makano sweldo ng mga nurses doon? Nako, ang, ang yayaman nila, nakakondo sila. Ha? May kotse pa. Ha? Kaya, next time, sabihan ko yung mga apo ko, kasi yung mga anak ko tapos na eh, yung mga apo ko, mag-nurse na lang sila. At pupunta sa Germany, sigurado, yayaman sila. And, of course, take up nursing in the Baliwag University. Yan. To President Patricia and the Baliwag University community, congratulations for being a recipient and pilot center of the Global Skills Partnership under the Triple Win Program. This maiden project further amplifies our bilateral cooperation through public-private collaboration with Germany. This will incentivize nursing as a course and a career path and further enhance the skills and develop the capacity of our students, our teachers, and the community for the mutual interest and benefit of Philippines and Germany. I therefore wish this program a continued success and hope that this initiative be replicated in other parts of the country. Please take note, Mr. Gruber, that it be repl replicated in other parts of the country. And you may consider Isabella, where I come from. <laughs> so to all of you, good morning and thank you very much. Bello, uh, President Lagunda, representatives of Baliwag University, Ched, um, dear colleagues from the GIZ, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kai Tomsik. I'm the head of cultural affairs and science at the German Embassy in Manila, and it's my pleasure to be here today. Thank you for having me. Maraming salamat. Cooperation in the health sector is one of the priorities of Germany in the Philippines. Of course, this cooperation started long before the pandemic, but it became even more important during the last two years. Two years during which the pandemic put enormous pressure on health systems around the world and a stark reminder of how important corporations like this are. Besides our cooperation and training and the deployment of healthcare workers, Germany has actively supported the Philippines in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. The so-called COVAX initiative, Germany being the second largest distributor and contributor to the COVAX initiative, has brought in more than 70 million doses of vaccines, almost half of all the vaccines in this country over the last two years. The Global Skills Partnership, which is supported by the German Ministry of Health, is an excellent example of cooperation between Germany and the Philippines. It's about sharing best practices, ideas, and innovation in nursing. In Germany, the demand for healthcare workers is steadily growing. And at the same time, the Philippines have many well-trained healthcare workers in training or fully trained that want to work in Germany to broaden their expertise and in some cases support their families back home. In a way, it's a win-win situation. Last week, Ambassador Reifenstuhl, Ambassador Anke, was able to join this delegation and travel to Ilocos Norte to attend a similar event at the second partner university in North of Tucson. For me, as the attaché of culture and science at the German embassy, it's great to see how this project translates to practice here at Baliak University. And it's great to see so many motivated students, I guess, later that benefit from this initiative. Let me congratulate you 
on the successful implementation of this project here at Balioc University. I'm excited to hear directly from staff and students later how they experienced the cooperation and how cooperation on the university level could look like in the future. Once again, thank you for having me. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat, Mr. Kai Tomzig. So moving on with our program, Cognizant that Germany has opened its doors to nursing professionals. We in the Baliwag University are very positive that our nursing program can meet the expected knowledge, competencies, and values that can address the Germany's requirements. At this moment, may I request Dean Elizabeth R. Rojas of the College of Nursing and Allied Health Sciences. Let's welcome Dean Rojas. Good morning to our dear friends. So uh, we are so delighted this day that uh, for the past days with us, with our German partners, we were able to establish not only partnership, but a very good friendship for us to go on and on with the implementation of our global, global skills partnership. And we thank you more than enough. So I will give you just a uh, encapsule the uh, what we went through as we implement our program. And uh, may I request our audio here to uh, please uh, play our, we have a video presentation that will capsulize our uh, different activities as we go along with the implementation of our project.
part of the program initially uh, in uh, May of uh, 2019. We started with our batch one with uh, 25 uh, students. So they, they will be finishing the project for the entire duration from 20, year 2020 up to 2023. So as then we have our second batch, which we started 2022 of this 2022, and they are now uh, on their uh, German language uh, training. And now uh, we hope that uh, in process, so they will be able to uh, be ready and be able to acquire all the needed uh, competencies that will uh, they will practice as a professional nurses here and uh, of course in Germany wherein they will be uh, actually completing this uh, project. And with this, we thank you very much, our partners from GAC and to our uh, UKB for all the support and for all the assistance. And we are looking forward that we will continue on with our partnership so as we are, we will be able to provide the opportunities both to our students and to our country as well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dean Rojas, for the overview of the BU Global Skills Partnership Program. At this juncture, we shall listen to the message of the Head of International Services of GIZ, Mr. J Bjorn Gruber. Allow me, please. Thank you very much. Yes, this name is wonderful because my father was also a temporary labor migrant to Sweden. To Sweden. That's why he took this challenge for me, Bjorn. No, but um, thank you again, uh, honorable guests, Mr. Cruz, Mr. Delmer Cruz, Mr. Tromsic, President Lagunda, Tony Rose, Dr. Divina Garcia. It's a big pleasure to be here and thank you very much for this very warm welcome in the last three days. I think we had our first um, hot welcome on Friday and now we can really say we can change from a, a ceremonial of a soft opening to an, a real inauguration. So we have something to show, everything is there, we were always, um, yes, intention if we have everything in place it's a big pleasure that we have everything in place and we can really celebrate so thank you very much <clears throat> because it, it's a lot of effort and seeing all these pictures here um, the the journey was quite a long one and um, just allow me to bring some thoughts about the overall model of the global skills partnership where we are now and how this laboratory fits in, in, in just, just a, a, a short journey through, through the past. Uh, the secretary already mentioned 2013 was more or less the birthday of the, the core idea, the soul of the GSP. When we started the triple win project with this overall idea to get a benefit for all involved parties and uh, the founding members were of course are sitting here around i'm very happy that we have poa with us and that we have chad with us that we have prc with us that berlitz is here who joined shortly afterwards and of course our friends the federal um, employment agency in germany they are also part of the story and uh, from beginning on, and then we had the UKB very fast on board, and the overall idea grew, grew, grew. And uh, one of the, the the founding members is still here and in. It's also Sir Raymond, uh, who who was really one of the the big engines to get the model also implemented. So this was 2013, and um, the benefit of all parties was in the center. We made, I think, an individual track with pre-departure and uh, post-arrival measures. But then 2014, this idea of the Global Skills Partnership 
uh, saw the light of the world by Michael Clemens from the Washington Center for Global Development. And then Najim and I went on fire. Najim from the Bertelsmann Foundation. And we said, hey, this is much, perhaps really beyond the triple win idea as we can perhaps move from an individual bridging system to a big idea that systems can be synchronized. So it was 2014 and we tried, ah, oh, is anybody interested? And it was not mature enough, unfortunately. So nobody bought it. And the, G the GSP has, of course, this opportunity. You can go for an outward track and an inward track. And the overall idea is, of course, technical cooperation. So I took an outward track. I was out. But other people were very busy and very successful. So 2019, the whole story started when uh, Bertelsmann Stiftung and Najim and all the colleagues here united started um, to join this model. And I'm in this way a newcomer. Former, I was a grandpa starting Triple Win as well. But now I'm a newcomer and I'm deeply impressed where we are that uh, this complexity, which was also, uh, even almost only seeing the forms um, and to align all this curricular and administrational issues, it's a, it's a big topic. And as we also had the opportunity to, to visit the different partner institutions for exposure, this is of course something which is even perhaps more complicated to align that we still are, have some challenges in front of us, but some challenges, we, I think we found solutions. So I guess that this wonderful laboratory is one piece in the bigger puzzle, which helps us a lot on the one hand to build up an infrastructure that we can build up long-term ties that people can move on the one hand, but also in terms of a technical partnership that we really find ways for a mutual benefit, the geriatrics, um, I think is one topic we identified as very, very important. But innovation, while we are talking and learning, is of course another topic. And I think the, the laboratory gives us a good opportunity to, to do so. So this, having said this, um, the German or the Filipino-German uh, partnership has, I think, a very good base, and uh, hopefully also the confidence in critical and difficult situations to overcome with solutions and not lose the, the belief, because it's really always a long time to develop a pilot. You fall back, you two steps forward. So that's why I guess it's good perhaps to stick to one motto I like very much. It's from an old uh, philosopher, Seneca, perhaps, I have to read it because it's, it, there's a twist in. It is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that things, that things are difficult. That means let's dare and salamat. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gruber. And as uh, mentioned by Sir Gruber, quoted, Let's dare. Let's be challenged. And we take the challenge. Okay? So moving forward in our program, we shall now have the message from Ms. Margarete Post, the Head of Global Skills Partnership, GIZ International Services. Let's welcome Ma'am Margarete. to remove this mask. Dear Mr. Tomsik, Mr. Cruz, President, Pat Dr. Patricia Laguna, Dean Elizabeth Rojas, ladies and gentlemen. Mabuhay et maranang salamat sa mainik na padangap. I'm delighted to welcome you here today together with my colleagues, Björn Gruber and Malte Bosse. We are able to initiate the first steps of our joint project at the end of 2019. And today, after about half of the project duration, 
we are very proud to be able to take a very important and visible next step with the opening of the skills lab. The skills lab, whose equipment and concept are in the hand, hands and responsibility of our very experienced technical partners, the University Hospital Bonn, here represented by Maria Hesterberg and Dirk Krockendorf is one of the central building blocks of our project. Maria and Dirk, as experts, can certainly explain further detail, details much better afterwards than me. The object of our project, which is being implemented on behalf and with funding of the, of the Bertelsmann Foundation in Germany, and also at the other university with the Foundation of Ministry of Health, is closely linked the integration of training content that is relevant and necessary for professional recognition and practice in Germany with the excellent content of Philippine training. This is not only to serve and to shorten the recognition process, considerable for postgraduate qualified nurses in Germany, but it's also intended to benefit students who wish to remain in the Philippines after graduation. All sides have already invested a lot of energy into this project. Some of the selected students have already been taking part in the language classes for a year. Others have just started their course. These classes are offered and implemented by Berlitz with great commitment in line with the project. We are aware of the fact that this requires a lot of dedication and commitment of the students. So we hope that they won't lose their stamina and the ability to overcome motivational loss. And it helps a lot that we are working closely together. Also, Bariak University in particular, Dean Elizabeth Rojas, together with the UKB, is very intensively involved with the connection and expansion of the Filipino curriculum with the necessary and desired German content. Of course, also with the planning of the concrete implementation of the additional learning units, as we had seen before. The excellent support of our coordinators here in the Philippines First and foremost, Ren Pascobillo and Julissa Atienza, also Mara Guzman, enables us to keep the thread of the project together from afar. Many other actors are our dialogue partners for the establishment and the implementation of the project. First and foremost, Departure of Health, CHAT, POEA and POLO. Of course, we are also in close coordination with our commissioning party, the Bertelsmann Foundation, which is making the start and the first implementation steps of the project possible here by financing all structural costs. We hope and wish that in coming months, no longer affected by restrictions due to the corona pandemic, we will be able to implement all necessary and planned, planned measures with full and joint strength and to create a rep re replicable model with this pilot project, which we can also transfer to other universities in other parts of the country for the benefit of all partners. Thank you so much for your interest and I'm wishing that we can reach all our goals together in a strong cooperation. Salamatiat Magandak Ara. Thank you very much, Ma'am Margarete. We shall now listen to the message from Sir Alexander Probstel, the CEO of the University Hospital Bonn, to be delivered by Maria Hesterberg, the Training Director of University Hospital Bonn. So allow me, please. A 
very warm welcome, dear Ms. Patricia Lagunda, dear representatives of um, POEA, of CHET, of Polo Germany, um, dear Mr. Tomzig from the German Embassy, and as I may say, dear friends from Baliwak University. Um, as the training director of the University Hospital of Bonn, UKB, as it is called, um, me and my colleague Dirk Roggendorf are not only glad, but we are very honored to witness this special day. We have gone through hard times of virtual meetings and video calls. We finally have had the opportunity to visit this excellent university here in Baliuak and celebrate the first step of PROCAST, the professional care simulation training under the Global Skills Partnership project. Since Mr. Alexander Pröbsel, the nursing director of UKB, um, cannot be here today, I would like to deliver the message on his behalf. But please accept my apologies for the differences between the address guest in the video and the actual guest list today because due to the time difference and to the changes of the list, it was not possible for him to address everyone who is here today in the correct way. So, but we hope you all feel very welcomed by the message of Mr. Probstel. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alexander Probstel. As the Chief Nursing Officer and as a member of the Board of the University Hospital of Bonn, we name it UKB, I am honored to address all partners and participants of Global Skills Partnership Project today. Even though I am not able to attend this solemn opening personally, I am very glad to have the opportunity to represent compliments on behalf of all board members, especially to you. The representatives of the Department of International Relations of the Ministry of Health. The President of Baliwak University, Dr. Patricia P. Lagunda. The Deputy Head of Mission, German Embassy, Ms. Laura Oechsle. The Dean of the College of Nursing and Health Science, Ms. Elizabeth Roxas. The representatives of the Bertelsmann Foundation, that made this project possible, and to our highly esteemed colleagues of the GIZ, and of course, to all participants of the project. The opening of the Skill Lab marks an important milestone in the course of the Global Skills Partnership. Furthermore, it is an important step on the way to the future-oriented ac academic exchange between UKB and Balualak uh, University and between Germany and the Philippines. Since 2017, Filipino nurses are members of our staff and they are all very valued colleagues and employees at UKB. We really appreciate the high qualification level and commitment for our hospital and for our patients. Most of those nurses have already accomplished the recognition process and are going to specialize in different nursing fields. Some of them became head nurses or passed continuous education and became a degree as an intensive care nurse. Congratulations. So the relationship between UKB and the Philippines is a very successful one. Let's open the next page of the book of our mutual future today. Thank you very much and patule natakumpai. Thank you very much, Sir Probstel and Mom Maria. Before we proceed to the second part of our program, we shall listen to the closing remarks of Mr. Najim Zahaf, the Senior Project Manager of Bertelsmann Stiftung Foundation, the project funder. Let's 
speaking as the last one in a long row of distinguished speakers is always a challenge and a true privilege. I promise to be very brief as I guess that the most um, important aspects of this innovative joint venture have already been expressed. I, what I would like to do is to add the perspective of the Bertelsmann Foundation and the rationale behind uh, our investment into this uh, innovative joint venture. But maybe I should start with uh, saying a few words about the Bertelsmann Foundation itself, because I've realized over the last years that, well, that the Bertelsmann Stiftung is not as well known outside Germany as we sometimes wish to. Um, the Bertelsmann Foundation is a private operating foundation and both an independent think tank and do tank. Since its foundation in 1979, the foundation has provided some 1.5 billion euros for non-profit work, based on the conviction that everyone in the society should grant it an opportunity to participate in the society. We engage in a variety of topics such as education, public health, governance, social market economy, just to name a few. Myself, I represent the migration department whose overarching normative principle guiding our work is the so-called triple win. And it was the former Secretary General Kofi Annan uh, of the United Nations, God bless him, who coined the term of triple win in, uh, when he stated already back in 2006, and I quote him now, more and more people understand that governments can cooperate to create triple wins for migrants, for the countries of origin, and for the societies that receive them. We at the Bertelsmann Foundation are perfectly convinced that we need to uphold this perspective, maybe more than ever. Fairness in migration cannot be achieved by countries working on their own. Triple win migration is reliant on consistent cross-border cooperation. For migration policies to be fair and sustainable, immigration countries need to broaden their perspective and to include the interests of countries of origin and of migrants themselves. So to achieve this goal, we need to think about beyond demarcated policy areas and we have to identify coherent policy responses. We also need to think beyond governments and include stakeholders like the civil society and the private sector. So intrigued by this visionary statement of Kofi Annan, we conducted a worldwide research uh, and we looked uh, for policies, projects, models, concepts, in 2014, which are in line with his idea. And it was this research project that brought me to the Philippines for the first time in 2014. And how else could I end my remarks today than to thank you from the bottom of my heart, and on behalf of the Battlesmart Foundation, that you made this vision of global skill partnerships a reality now, from which others could learn and build upon. My heartfelt gratitude goes first and foremost to Baliwak University, and I mean all of you, the extremely dedicated teaching staff, the leadership, but also the students who all went that significant extra mile. And last but not least, a warm thank you goes to the partners from GIZ who have acted as a hub and bring all the threads together. Many thanks for your attention. We shall now proceed to the Domingo Santiago Senior Building, third floor, for the ceremonial soft opening and turnover of the Nursing Skills Laboratory 3. Thank you very much.
operator, and he's um, controlled where the um, computer that you can see on the right hand side, the monitor, and with this pad. Yes. So you can see all the white signs of her on the monitor, as you can see it um, on your control pad as well. So now if the nurse takes care of the patient and for example provides oxygen, then it will have an effect directly on the white side. Okay. But only if it's really provided, if it's done correctly. Or for example, if you um, are afraid and you have a high heart rate, yeah, and you have a soothing communication to the patient to calm it down, then it will affect on the vital signs as well. Yeah. Um, you can activate. Maria, kannst du mal den Monitor aktivieren? So now, for example, if the nurse connects the ECG, then the ECG is shown on the monitor. And also um, saturation, blood pressure, everything that the nurse provides to the patient is shown on the monitor. And everything she does, or the nurse does, is recorded here as well. So that you can see afterwards, you can see her actions, recorded and her effects on the vital signs later on. It's all recorded in here simultaneously. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we have different um, different situations, holistic situations, for example, heart attack, post surgery care or um, any what about cardiac arrest? Yeah, you can uh, you can uh, learn about cardiac arrest as well. She um, she's able to be resuscitated as well. Yeah, she okay. can she can do it on her. Yeah. but it's much more. I think when you go to the next, when you go to her to the bedside, you can even uh, feel her pulse. Yeah. Yeah, you can feel her pulse, and you can even talk to her because the, the teacher is sitting here. He uses his headset, yeah, and he can talk to the nurse through the mouth of Anne. And if the nurse is speaking to Anne, she has a microphone in her ear, so if the, uh, the teacher here can listen to what the nurse is uh, saying. So there is an interaction all the time. Yes? Okay, any more questions? Yeah. So how many modules are there now, right now, in this feature? How, how many, many modules, like disorders? Okay. Yeah. 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 You like to program it? Yeah. And you can program any oh, situation. Can program. Yes. Okay. We can program and we teach them uh, the, uh, the teachers from Bad yeah. Bad as well how to program it. Okay. Do you provide a clinician? I mean, to assist, to yeah, assist course, the learners. Of course, of course. Yeah. Of course you do. And that's it's a part of the package. Yes, when we come back in September, yeah. we do training uh, together with students and, and, and together with the teachers. Well. So at the yeah. moment they cannot touch it. Well, of course they can. They can already. They, they can use it. Yes. Yeah. Fixed. Everything's fine. Uh -huh. They can use it from now on. So the students of Bolivar University are the at fourth year level, I heard? Yes. So these fourth year level students can now manipulate. Of course. Okay. But even even the lower level students can, yeah. can, oh, okay. can start learning. They have started. At the moment everything is um, programmed in English. Oh yeah, but that's right. It's going on in the project and if yeah. they are, are able to speak German. You can switch over to the German uh, program. So there is a translation. No, no, no problem. Okay. And that's the reason why we have three of our faculty members. Yeah. For them to easily manipulate and easily get the audio 
I know the high fidelity is supported by a technician who knows, you know, technical expertise. Yes. But since you have a faculty, three of our faculty yes. members have trained yes. so they can, you know, yes, they can. in terms of educating the yeah. my students, they can. Yes, they can. If there is any problems, they can always contact us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Very easy. Very easy. Yes. Yeah. So, but maybe we should go to the next room and you can uh, touch her, touch. <laughs> feel her pulse. Yeah. Yeah. We have some, you know, high fidelity available already. Some nurses. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, she's, she's saying welcome to everyone. <laughs> oh, she should say it, so then I have to say it. <laughs> she's an English speaking author. I am. Hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. Okay, if you, if you put your hands here, yeah. you can feel her breathing. Right. Just try it, please. Right. <laughs> Hi, Anne. Are you in pain? <laughs> Hi, yeah, I teach quite okay. Oh, you're okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Why did yeah. you say you're okay? <laughs> because I feel okay. Yeah. How's your breathing? <laughs> Are you in pain? Uh, Are you moment. in pain? We're gonna be, there are so many people around here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited? Oh, yes. Okay. And this is and this is maybe the main the main difference between uh, a traditional mannequin like yeah. we used it in the years before and now the high fidelity simulator because we really can simulate human reactions mm -hmm. and that doesn't only mean the, the vital the vital signs or something like that but communication practice is, is possible so um, and and I, I I didn't get everything that that Dirk said before but um, the simulator can react on every action that yeah. you are doing yeah. bedside so this is a very important difference and this is a very important training method for the students. And so the students will get, will get an exercise, they will get a, a case study to work on, and if they, if they got the nursing relevant information out of the case study, they can really put it into action afterwards. And that is, um, yeah, and that is a very special didactic method to do that. And what you find there on the on the other bed, that seems to be a bit strange, mm -hmm. but this is the simulator Oops. that we call GERT. This is GERT, and I will sorry, and I will show you what what it's all about because this is a simulation training to simulate geriatric patients. So uh, I would love to I would love to um, to give you an example because the, because the purpose of that is that all the students are getting the impression what it means to be a patient after a stroke, for instance, with a hemiplegic uh, disease or something yeah. like that. So um, and this is and. And this is something that I would really love to to set an example. So, but I need a volunteer. Uh, what's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Yes. Yeah. 
The Filipinos are very caring, very yeah. interactive, compassionate. It's because we are exposed to real life yeah. situations yeah. in our hospital. Yeah. And uh, that is maybe the reason why we have not thought of, mm -hmm. of having this kind of very expensive, yeah. <laughs> very expensive but, model. But you know, we, we are the opinion it should be an addition, an addition, a substitution yeah. to, yeah. to the real life experience. Exactly. Of because yeah. some things you can even learn better yeah. here in the laboratory yeah. than with, with real life patients. That Maybe because of the idea situation. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome.